Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. I wanted to show you how to make a junk journal that has a twine binding. Um, I mentioned a few weeks ago in one of my previous videos, and I showed you this book, that I wanted to start that process or even just do it all in one setting. Let's, let's see how that goes as far as length. But this is a super easy way to get pages done and ready for a junk journal. As you can see, this is really full. Um, this is one of the first books I made when I just started to learn about making junk journals, and that's probably been about three years ago, maybe four or something like that. So I learned a few things. Um, one, this is super easy. Two, don't overstuff your books so it doesn't look like this. Plan ahead for that. My spine here is not a very thick one and that little fold that's on each side is spread out and so it's just bursting. So what I want to do in the one that I have tonight is probably make a two section junk journal similar to this. Um, these little inserts, the, the sections that you can see that look like a little book in and of itself are called signatures if you're not familiar with that. Why they're called that I don't know but that's what they're called. So the problem that I had with this one was that I filled the book too much for the size of the spine. One of these signatures would be adequate and it would it would maybe bend out a little bit but not quite like this. There's nothing, um, I mean this is fun to look at but it's a little bit awkward and maybe doesn't fit on a shelf so easily. I have it kind of on display so it works. But I also like the idea of something being a little more manageable. So when, when I did this, this wrapped twine spine, it was at a stage where I was very intimidated about doing a sewn-in spine. Um, let me see if I have one of those handy here. I've got one right here. I'll bring it down from my shelf. This is a spine that's sewn in. Or um, I say spine that's sewn in, but what I mean is the signatures are sewn into the spine. Here you can see I have um, one, two, three signatures. They're sewn into the back of the spine. And this is a hard cover book and I, re I split it and got extra cardboard from cereal boxes and I reinforced the spine so it would hold a lot. This kind of sticks out too, but um, I could put this elastic lace on there. I could tighten it up, it's loose now, and it would hold it together still just fine. But I didn't know how to do this and it seemed too much for me. I have since learned, and it's not difficult, it's a little time consuming, but it's really fun. Um, but I guess I just thought it would be fun to show this. So if you don't want to try the sewing, you don't have the needles, you don't want to get the needles, and you want to do something quickly, if you're like me, sometimes you go on a creative streak and you just want to do something and you don't want it to take forever, but you want to have something to show for your time crafting, this is a good way to do that. So find a book somewhere. Um, I suggest, at least in my area, I would go to Goodwill or I would go to one of the resale shops or even your local library might have a shelf where they sell hardback books at a reasonable price. So I picked out this one. It was $2. Um, and it actually sounded like it might be a fun story that takes place in my native state of Missouri. But it doesn't have to... Um, it doesn't have to be, um, I don't even know what I was going to say. Lost my train of thought. Anyway, get a hardback book that's wide enough to hold the amount of signatures that you want to make. Let's see. Uh, hang on, i got to find my knife. One okay, second. I have an X-Acto knife here. So if you have something like this, get that um, handy. Get your book and... What we're going to do is, like we call it, gutting the book. I am going to slice down where the book, let me pull it down here, 
see where that little thing is that's like where the book is glued in so this page and this page are all kind of one and I'm going to slice down here to detach this side the side here from this and I'm going to do it on this side too and sometimes you can kind of pull that and get get that loosened up and there's just a little area right down through here where I can cut that and just take the whole book apart if you're looking or when you're looking for a book try to see if that spine comes loose if it's glued in really solid it it can work I have found it to be much more difficult and it tears more so hold your book up you know what you can go to the dollar store and find hardback books uh, for a dollar um, and they're brand new so that's another source anyway this one will be fine it's pulling away so that means the book part is going to separate from the cardboard or whatever kind of chipboard I think that's called that I want to use for my book for my junk journal so this is a nice sharp one I bought of course on Amazon and so what I'm wanting to do is just pull that open and pretty much there see it kind of punctured through there so I'm gonna I'm trying to do it straight but it's kind of bending a little okay so we have that there now be careful I have cut through the actual cover oh man I did do that there shoot well, well we will repair that with some tape let's just go ahead um, and do the other you get the idea this knife is super sharp and I pushed a little too hard and I went through the cover which you're not supposed to do this one's working out a little bit better so there's this like netting type stuff I'm just gonna cut through that pull it out it's a little bit glued in here and there we go okay so you can see where it's glued it's a little bit tricky um, get up in here a little bit more okay there we go basically tearing this off if this had a little more glue than I thought it was going to. So it tore there a little bit, but that won't be a problem. What is a little bit of a nuisance is that I I did slice. Where did, where did it go? Right there. So I will reinforce that with some packaging tape. In just a little bit so this is the first step this is just gutting your book and getting your cover so I will be back momentarily and we'll continue okay I'm back I just wanted to trim up the inside of this cover a little bit so I just took my scissors just a little sharp craft scissors or kid scissors is fine and just clean that up a little I'm wanting this to open and close without too much scraping. Um, when I made this one, I didn't reinforce the spine. I just wrapped directly onto the paper that's part of the cover um, that works, but I don't think it's quite as strong as might be good. So I found a shoe box in my garage. Usually I use cereal boxes, and the one time I need a cereal box, we have recycled them all. So this is from a shoe box. Now, you could put it in like this where the advertising the brand name is showing or I could do it like this but I am kind of liking this because this is a junk journal and this junk journal is going to contain a lot of 
pieces of mail and what we might consider more junk or odds and ends versus nicer scrapbooking paper or um, cardstock. So see, I'm pushing that down just to see, and that's fitting. It's maybe just a little bit scraping on that side. So I'm gonna play around with this. I think that's okay. I'm gonna glue that down, and then what I will probably do is, um, because I did get the cover a little bit, I'm debating on whether I should just take some clear packaging tape, and after I have glued it, I might reinforce that little place. It just slit from about here to here. So that's the one word of caution that I really didn't emphasize enough, is when you're cutting through and gutting the book, try not to get the cover, because that's why we have the cover. So I'm gonna glue this here, let that dry for a little while, and then we will come back and pick up on step two, which would be to wrap our twine or whatever selection of string or yarn you wanna use. I like these. I have this um, purple. This is from uh, Joann's and it's in that Mrs. Ms. Sparkle discount area. So this is kind of a textured purple, I don't know if you would call it, oh, they call it jute, twine and jute. So here's the twine, the color is eggplant, and this is the jute, which is a rougher, more textured look. I'm kind of thinking I want to try this purple jute, but I also have the neutral color. And since this has got a neutral, creamy kind of color, and this is I'm actually thinking now that I talk about this, this will be my better selection. So if you get to this point, that's good. And then go ahead and find your twine or your jute or whatever you want to use to wrap with. This will probably take a while to dry, so I'm going to get started on that soon. But just double checking my cutting here. And just make sure that you can open and close the book fairly easy and that this little cardboard reinforcement fits nicely into the spine to just add a little extra strength so when we're wrapping it and stuffing our books, it will hold up under the strain. Okay, back in a little bit. I just finished gluing this in. Um, I didn't show the glue application process because I think... Everybody knows how to glue, and now I have a rubber band stuck in this clamp. But, <laughs> uh, well, it doesn't matter. If you have something like this, um, let me grab my little bowl here. It'll be easier to see what I'm doing. These are from the dollar store. If you have a Dollar Tree nearby, they're always at the checkout aisle, and I love them for sealing like chips and bread and also for crafting. So what I want to do is just maybe put a few of those down Gosh, I'm really butterfingers tonight. Do do that, something like that. Clamp it down or use a clothespin if you have that. Another thing to do is just get another heavy book and weight this down. So I can clamp it. I mean, you don't probably even have to. I just like to make sure that that glue and the cardboard are really in close contact and will dry together. I'm gonna take the inside of the book and put that on there and let that sit for an hour or so and make sure that glue is good and dry and the pieces are adhering well to one another. When that dries then, I will come back and we will do the next part. Okay, I'm back. My book, I believe, is dry. The support piece I put in, setting aside that gutted book. You can recycle these. Um, I also have sometimes taken the pages and made like little um, tuck spots or pocket, library type pockets to use in junk journals or, you know, just recycle it and move it along. Okay, so see this is good. That moves well. I still have this little tear in here, but with that support, it's not too bad. So I think what I'm going to do is... On the inside, just add some reinforcement of um, some kind of packaging tape. I have here just this duct tape, but um, you could use this or like that um, 
with a duct tape that's like themed, you know, it's like colors or, or whatever. So I'm just gonna kind of go to the top of the white or the creamy color there. I went a little far here, so I'm just gonna trim that instead of tearing it. So that's just going to add a little more reinforcement so my junk journal spine is extra secure. This won't show much at all, obviously, I mean it's in a closed book, but if you, <clears throat> excuse me, prefer a more finished look, um, sometimes what I've done is glue on some lace or something there if I don't like that crease. See, there's a little bit, just a slight bit showing there of the cardboard, but once it's full, all the stuff's in it, for me, that doesn't matter. So just bend this a little. Just get that tape kind of um, molded a little bit so that your book will easily open and close. And so, if I turn this back, this is where that split is. So I, you know, I thought that might help. I just don't know if I need to worry about that, if that's going to matter or not. But just, eh, just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and do kind of a strip here. This is really not a step that I wanted to have in here but you know it happens and so I'm just leaving it here because there is that human element to our crafting it doesn't always go as planned does it but in the long run it'll be fine this actually isn't such a bad idea because what it's going to serve to do is strengthen this a little bit at the top where the cardboard ends and that book right up in here that's got a little bit of reinforcement now so since I did it on the side where I cut through accidentally I will also go ahead and do one here and I'm just gonna come over like I did here into whoopsie into that crack and I will leave a little extra ah, I didn't line that up right let me do that again I'm sure watching all this is not the most exciting thing. A little bit of length so I can fold it over. That looks better. I'm pressing it into that fold, giving myself a little extra right there. And we'll just flip it over. And there we go. So it is super strengthened now. I'm going to trim that a little because I got a little bit of a fold there that I don't want. But there's still plenty to bend up. So now the bottom and top have a little extra tape. Okay, so there we go. It's fine like that. <clears throat> if you didn't like this title showing, you could add some scrapbooking paper and glue that on. I have also done that. But since we are going to wrap our twine around there, I don't find that necessary and sometimes I like kind of the look of having a book that was once a story or a novel or whatever <clears throat> you know like that that effect of having the title and author there even though that's not what it's being used for it just kind of is a nod to its origin okay so I'm taking this twine I had showed the purple earlier but I've decided to use the neutral. Um, it actually works better in my house. I don't have too much purple anymore. Um, you know, I mean, maybe my girls room or something might have had some at one time, but we don't have purple in our decor. So having this sitting out will just feel like it goes better. I am not really measuring this. Um, I guess I'll, I'll try to do that with this. Okay, let's step back a minute. And look at this so I went around about twice but I have extra room 
at the top here so I can tie off my twine. And then I added this little decoration of a um, piece of fabric that I just knotted on there. And then I put this white safety pin with a bead. And then this, this is not part of that. That's like a bookmark. So it's just a little random kind of decorative look. I don't know what, what you would call that, but I like kind of, I don't know if it's vintage -y or shabby chic look or something, but anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. So see, I'm just leaving a little bit of extra there. That can always be trimmed off, so don't want to overthink this. I'm gonna go around once twice. So on the inside here, it there's two strings. And then I'm coming up the back. <clears throat> Excuse me, I am losing my voice or something. And there is now kind of the same on the front and the back. So I'm just going to give myself a little extra room to play with there. Okay, I had a little interruption there. Sorry. You know, it's life with a family, which is fine. Um, Okay, so basically we have have it wrapped around, just making sure this is visible, and I'm going to knot that. Okay, so it's like the beginning of tying a shoe, just basically overlapping. If you can see that, it's not a full knot yet, it's just the wrapping around like when you first start to tie a shoe. Then I'm going to pick up my first wrap and that first string where I first started wrapping it is what I'm trying to say. I am just knotting it here like a shoe, okay? Just, but instead of doing a bow, I'm knotting it and now I'm gonna add a little bit of a bow. Okay, let's trim this up. And let's see how that works. You can play around with it. One thing to remember is um, to keep these loose enough, your strings here loose enough where you can insert your, um, what's the word, signatures. So I have one already here. Let's back away from the cover here just for a second. So see how that is? You just want to make sure you get this knot, however you choose to tie it off, secure. Um, I just, like I said, you're starting a tying of a shoe, do that, knot it, and then put it in a bow, and then just pull, while you're doing that, bring in the other string so that they're brought together, and that keeps them on here. I feel like this may be a little bit loose, and with this tape on here, it's making that a little more slick, but as the book fills up, that will be less of an issue, because it'll just get tight. So, um, okay, yeah, I'm going to set that aside and briefly just show you what I've done for my signature. This is a collection of different papers, envelopes, music paper, pretty um, botanical pictures from a book I found at a resale shop. Um, some of the music is from when my kids had piano lessons when they were little, so it has a little bit of sentimental value. I've also put bits and pieces of some of my um, scrap book paper, lighter weight stuff um, that I like. And I have this cute tissue. I have a word puzzle. I have a children's book page. I, I like the planet, the planet Earth, and then there's the moon on the other side. I have this book on plants, so I tore out a piece of that, a page of that. Uh, kind of been into the moon stuff lately, so I have a little scrap of that. This is from my husband's work, so I just took this big envelope. Later I will open up that end so stuff can insert, and I will probably decorate that so it's a little nicer looking. On the other side of that envelope, I've already glued this down because it was sticky from the label. Okay, anyway, scrapbook paper. This is a picture here. I'll show you the other side that, if I can find it. Here we go. This is a drawing my youngest son did 
several years ago and we came across it. So I put that in here. Really any assortment of stuff you want to use. I tried to focus here on using uh, quote unquote junk. So, you know, like an envelope, okay, junk. You might throw it away, book pages. It's a bunch of miscellaneous. I haven't chosen a set of nice scrapbook paper that you can buy in a kit or anything. I've just thrown things together that I have at home. And I love to do this with dyed paper. Um, when I first started this in this original book here, I did dyed paper. Whoopsie, so sorry about that. Just hit the, my phone. Um, I did like blues and purples and stuff with some um, paint and I dyed the paper. But in here, I just have coffee or tea dyed paper. Again, another picture that my son drew. I have these old 60s era workbooks I bought at the library shop. Um, our used book stand, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Here's a cellophane bag, a cover to a piano book, another business envelope, more dyed paper. Here is the sweetest thing. My grandson drew this Hulk picture for me and my husband. Uh, we had taken them to Legoland and he wrote a little thank you note. And it's so sweet. So I'm putting that in this book because it's a way of keeping this picture, which is so special to me because I just think he's so sweet, but um, also using it and, and letting it have a function instead of just being stuck in a drawer forever. It's got a purpose now. So this is just an odd assortment of things that I think are fun. I like crinkly. I like the cellophane. And this is my signature. You could sew it with a pamphlet type stitch. You could staple this. But the beauty of this setup is these pages can go in and out. You can add to it if it gets bulky, um, too bulky. You can take out some of the pages. So I'm just taking this string. They're kind of crisscross, but I'm just grabbing the one that was closer to the left on the top and I am inserting my signature. Okay, and I want to make sure that that first piece went through. And this is kind of sliding, so we'll straighten that up. It is a little loose. Um, I may go back and tighten that so it stays secure. If you don't knot that too tightly, you can adjust it as you get your signatures in. So that is basically it. So now when you open it up, you have all these cool pieces of paper that are held in here just by this twine. So really there's no sewing involved. You could, like I said, sew your signature together, but then the flexibility of this setup is lost. So as I'm using this as sort of a smash book, memory keeping style book, I can take stuff out if I decide I don't want it. Or maybe I'll get something in the mail and I'm like, oh, I think I want to add that envelope. I, I can insert things here because they're not sewn down. So Okay, so there you have a twine wrapped junk journal. Super easy to make very inexpensive and it's really really fun to work in this I showed you my book earlier I just enjoyed the randomness to it I didn't worry about being chronologically in order in that book that I showed you I just wherever I found a spot and I wanted to attach something I did so like here's a piece of paper say I wanted to keep this glue it smash it. I can cover up that label. I would put labels here. I would write here. It's really just a free-for-all. However you want to creatively express yourself in a journal like this, it's the perfect canvas or a backdrop in which to do that. So I hope you liked seeing this. I, I think it's a fun, fun way and a very simple way to create a junk journal that you can memory keep in. Thanks for watching. I know this was long, but I hope it was interesting to you and fun and motivating to produce a book just like this all on your own. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Bye.